He may be vengeance, he may be the knight, but did anyone actually play Batman Arkham Knight? Let's find out. Welcome everyone, I am Oldbit and this is Did Anyone Play, a series where we investigate, analyze, and determine the truth about how much gamers have truly played and completed video games. How do we do this? We use trophy and achievement milestones within games and then compare those results to our huge gaming database to evaluate and rank games compared to the rest of the industry. Using objective data and statistical comparisons, we can draw conclusions. We aren't reviewing games in a traditional sense. Our goal is to provide analysis that can be better used to understand player behavior while ignoring game sales and hype to ensure we see reality as it truly is. Remember that all percentages we will be talking about here come from the total number of players that have launched and played the game for any period of time, so these results are a full reflection on how gamers actually played Arkham Knight. Our games database is constantly growing, so I wanted to add a little bit of fun to the videos using that data. So I'd like to introduce you to a little game I call Better or Worse. I'll give you three games, and you have to guess if Batman Arkham Knight did better or worse in rankings compared to each of these games. I'll give the answers out a bit later in the video. So you can see here the games Batman is up against today. We have Hogwarts Legacy, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So place your bets, and good luck to you. As always, please hit that like button, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want more of these types of videos. And a quick spoiler warning, as we may be talking about some elements of late game progression. So let's find out if anyone actually played Batman Arkham Knight on Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. The first milestone that players will likely reach is called Journey Into Night. This milestone is achieved once a player calls in the Batmobile for the first time and jumps inside. So how many players made it to this first early milestone? On Steam, 86% of players hit this milestone. PlayStation had 90.4%. And Xbox saw 69.3% of players do this. And we can see very clearly Xbox has lost 30% of players before this early milestone, and that's only about 10 minutes into the game. Let's go to the graph. Arkham Knight is off to a great start on PlayStation, with Steam not too far behind. Both are nicely above the industry average. For Xbox, it is a bit disappointing to be below the average so early on, but there's still plenty of game ahead, so we'll see where this goes. What is Batman Arkham Knight? It's a single-player action-adventure game and a direct sequel to Batman Arkham City, where you take up the mantle of Batman once again to fight against Scarecrow as he threatens the entire city of Gotham. Arkham Knight focuses on a much larger Gotham City where usage of the Batmobile is an integral part of progressing the story. Combat in this game focuses on chaining together long strings of combos while dodging attacks and using gadgets. Then of course there is the stealth component, which allows Batman to thin the herds of enemies and silently take down threats. The story takes about 30 hours to complete. It was developed by Rocksteady and published by Warner Brothers. Arkham Knight released on June 23rd, 2015 on the platforms. The second milestone we've chosen is called As the Crow Flies. This is awarded after a player escapes from Ace Chemicals after defusing Scarecrow's toxic bombs. Drive out and jump up the ramp and that's it. How many players made it here? Steam has 57.3% of players achieving this, PlayStation is at 52.1%, and Xbox is at 36.4%. So Arkham Knight on PlayStation had the largest drop here with a 38% loss. Steam held on to the most and moved into the lead in terms of the strongest platform for this game. Steam is also the only platform above the industry average at this time, as both PlayStation and Xbox are below. It's always good to understand the competition a game was up against when it launched. What was happening around June 23rd of 2015 in the gaming world? Well, titles like Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, LEGO Jurassic World, and MotoGP 15 came out around this time on the platforms. Looking at Google Trends here, we see that Arkham Knight in Blue was very strong at the time of release, and not much else around. So it's clear that the hype was high for Batman, and the competition was weak. We like to pick a mid-game marker for our third milestone. Here we have chosen Brotherhood of the Fist. This is awarded during Chapter 6 of the main story while defending a movie studio with Robin. How many players reach this milestone? Steam has 39.6% of players, PlayStation has 36.1%, and Xbox has 24.4%. This is a better hold than the last milestone. We see that Xbox lost the least amount of players here, and Steam actually drops the most, if only by a little. PlayStation has risen back above the industry average, which is good news as well. How did Arkham Knight do with critics? Metacritic for PlayStation rates it at 87 out of 100, and Xbox got an 85. On Steam, users have rated it very positive all time and recently with over 82,000 reviews. Open critic rating is an 86 with 82% of critics recommending it. I think we can say the reception was strong for Batman. The most important milestone is our fourth one, and what we base our industry ranking on. 
It definitely shows how many players finished the game and truly played Arkham Knight. This milestone is called Master of Fear and is awarded when a player defeats a Scarecrow and completes the main story. Where does Arkham Knight end up on the different platforms? On Steam, 33.1% of players completed the game. For PlayStation, it was 28.8%, and on Xbox, it was 19.2%. This is actually a very strong hold for Batman from the mid-game milestones with single-digit drops for all platforms. Now that we've reached the end of the game, we want to check the percentage of players that quit the game after making it through the first milestone but failing to reach game completion. Not a surprise that Steam is doing the best here, but PlayStation is also showing strong against the industry average. Arkham on Xbox is just slightly worse than the average as well, so no big negatives here. And finally, to get a feel for how the completionists treated this game, the rare milestone 5 chosen for Arkham Knight is called Run Through the Jungle. This milestone can be achieved if the player can fly under the three main bridges between the islands in one continuous glide. For Steam, we see that 2% of players actually accomplished this. On PlayStation, 1.2% did it, and Xbox had 0.3% that achieved this. Now let's see the full picture. Here are the raw milestones for Batman Arkham Knight with the industry averages in gray for comparison purposes. Let's get into it. So some takeaways here are that Steam and PlayStation stayed fairly close together. Their curves mimic each other pretty well with a stronger PlayStation start and a stronger Steam finish. Xbox has a much steeper decline in the early stages, but flattens out towards the end of the game. So this is our final tally for our milestones. But now let's see how the game stacks up against all other games in our database and find out if anyone truly played Arkham Knight. We use Milestone 4 as our ultimate ranking target. Here are the results for each platform for Milestone 4 once again. It's time to reveal the final rank Arkham Knight has in our database. Here we go. Steam is a 7 out of 10, PlayStation also earns a 7, and Xbox hits a 5. So on Steam and PlayStation, a decent number of players played Batman Arkham Knight, and on Xbox, an average number of players played it. So a solid result for sure. Not overwhelmingly strong, but certainly nothing to be disappointed about. Those are the industry rankings, but our database is able to give us other comparisons as well. Let's break it down. Here we can show the breakdown for Arkham Knight across class, genre, review score, and game length. Please keep in mind that because we are comparing data across smaller subsets, the statistical power of these rankings are weaker than our overall industry ranking. Starting off with the class comparison, Arkham Knight is a AAA game. So ranking it compared to all other AAA contemporaries, we see that the results are slightly weaker. Steam stays the same, but Xbox drops to a 4, and PlayStation drops to a 6. Gamers played it less compared to other AAA titles. How about genre? We have classified Batman as action-adventure. Compared to other games in that genre, we see that again it shows as slightly weaker with the same rankings as the class comparison. So just like class, Arkham Knight was played less with respects to genre. Next is ranking based on reviews. The scores for Arkham Knight put it in the category with games that have scored in the 80s for Open Critic. The review rankings compared to other similar reviewed games show real weakness as Steam drops to a 6, Xbox drops to a 3, and PlayStation drops to a 5. This was a bit surprising that Batman struggles against other games review in the 80s. Lastly is ranking based on average game completion length. Batman is in the 25 to 50 hours range. Rankings compared to similar length games has a slight reduction, with Steam the same but Xbox and PlayStation dropping one rank each. Overall we see that in no subcategory is Batman Arkham Knight stronger in comparison. So those are the rankings. But now we should revisit our game better or worse. So to recap, we have Hogwarts Legacy, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Last chance to make your choices. Which ones are Batman Arkham Knight ranked better than or worse than? And the results are? Players played Arkham Knight less than Hogwarts, but played Arkham Knight more than both Red Dead 2 and Odyssey. Can't wait to hear your reaction in the comments below. Now let's get deep and see if we can tease out some other observations by looking at these results in different ways. It's time for the deep dive. Let's start with progressive player loss. Each group shows how many total players have stopped playing the game at that particular milestone. A couple things to call out here is that we see the initial large drop on Xbox, but there is another large drop at Milestone 2 for all platforms. The interesting results after that is we see a slowing, which means players that made it into the mid game were more likely to stay on to the end. Moving on, we can look at Milestone player retention. This calculation only takes into account the player population loss as a percentage compared to the previous milestone. Here we see a clear indication that the late game results were strong as less and less players left as a percentage the deeper they got into the game. However, the flip side to that is that some of the early game moments didn't retain players quite as much as they were probably hoping. How about completionists? How did the rarest milestones perform on the different platforms? 
Steam is strong here with 57% of the overall take with PlayStation getting over 34% and Xbox almost to 9%. Steam was clearly the winner here, but PlayStation was fairly strong as well. Finally, we check on early versus late game retention. When you read a chart like this, the best performers are further away from the center of the circle. Early game Steam is strongest with PlayStation close and Xbox lagging behind. End game loss, all three are bunched up close together and showing really good results. Completionist lost again shows Steam in the lead with Xbox taking third. Let's take one final look at all the platforms and their Milestone 4 results, but this time we show the full percent rank within our database. This is to give you a detailed view of how the rankings played out. Use this data as you will. Let's wrap this up. So what are our major takeaways from all the data? Above average is going to be the theme here. Arkham Knight performed above average in most our rankings. It's a solid game in terms of our rankings, but not a great game. And considering the pedigree this game comes from, I think that's actually the eye-opener. The player retention flowed a bit. The early game was the weakest as we saw issues moving up to Milestone 2, but then we saw a strong hold as the game progressed and players dug in to see the story through. There were some quit moments, but not strong ones. And I do think I should mention the Batmobile. Rocksteady was very excited to add this in, but caused a lot of changes in the world and mission design to include it. Not all of these changes were well received. The tank missions were a slog, and when I think about replaying this game, that's the only area that gives me pause. Also, non-lethal tank rounds. You know what I mean? There's not many characters as iconic as Batman, and Rocksteady had an amazing track record leading up to this game. A more loose design for Gotham to accommodate vehicles created some polarization. Some choices didn't land as well with the general audience, but our results show that for the most part, gamers played this, enjoyed it, and finished it more than most games. And that's a wrap. Hopefully you all found this data interesting, and we all learned a little bit more about our gaming world today, and Batman Arkham Knight in particular. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to do all the YouTube support stuff. Grant us a like and sub if you haven't already. I'd love to read any comments you have down below. What conclusions do you all take from this data? And of course, feel free to suggest the next game we should look at to determine if anyone played it. Until then, take care of yourself and each other.